So question nine, this is the first of the op amp questions. Um, and it's a pretty simple uh, first question for the op amp. So you can see we've got a voltage divider here and we've got a, an op amp which is wired as a unity gain buffer. So that means that the voltage at the input here is gonna be replicated at the output of the op amp here. So what the op amp is always doing at the output is pushing the voltage up and down in order to try to get these two um, terminals in balance. At least that's what happens when it's wired uh, to produce negative feedback, which is how the, the unity gain buffer works. So V out should be the same as the voltage just here. That's what we're expecting to see. Um, now in this case, we've got a voltage divider. You can see the bottom node here is grounded. So this is zero volts down here. And this resistor is one eleventh of the total resistance. So the total resistance is 11 kilo ohms. That's one plus 10 kilo ohms. Um, so this is one eleventh of that. So we're basically gonna see one eleventh of the voltage here. So V out is just gonna be equal to 12 divided by 11. Again, let's see his octave to do this. One. 0 0.091 volts. So that's our answer there. So we just type the number into the box. Okay, question 10. So question 10, another op amp question. This time the op amp is wired as a non-inverting op amp. So um, this is one of the two kind of classic amplifier configurations for an op amp. Um, the gain of this amplifier is determined by the ratio of these two resistors, R1 and R2. Um, so uh, we know that the input voltage is 0 0.2 volts. We know that R1 is one kilo ohm, and that R2 is 12 kilo ohms. So the basic idea here is that the op amp is gonna push the voltage up or down at the output here in order to try to keep the, the voltages at its two inputs equal to each other. So the input voltage to the amplifier comes in from somewhere else, not 0 0.2, but the op amp is gonna do its best to achieve a voltage at the other point here of 0 0.2. So it's gonna be aiming to get the voltage at this point to 0 0.2 volts. So assuming it doesn't saturate, that's, that's what we'll end up with. So let's assume initially that the op amp doesn't saturate and we'll calculate what voltage we would get up here. Um, so the gain A is gonna be equal to uh, one plus 12 over one. So that's the total resistance divided by this resistance here. So one plus 12 over one. Now I could have written there a thousand plus 12,000 over 1,000, but it's gonna give me the same same result anyway. Um, so it's gonna be, that's the gain of the circuit. So that's basically V out divided by V in. So we can say V out going to be equal to A times V in. So the gain multiplied by the input voltage. So our input voltage is 0 0.2. That's going to be multiplied by 13, which is 2.6 volts. So that's our result there, 2.6 volts. And now before we move on from this question, or yeah, until before we move on from this question, there just something interesting to see here is that if the op amp doesn't saturate, so if the output of the op amp here doesn't go outside the range of its uh, voltage supply here, then this is what you're expecting to see is that you're gonna get the same voltage at the two inputs here. 
Um, so another way that we can sort of write this out, if you forget, like the, you know, if you can't remember the formula or whatever, another way to think about this is just well, whatever the input voltage is here, you're going to have the same voltage here. So the current down here is going to be um, V in divided by R1. That's going to be the current flowing down through R1 here because if the voltage here is 0 0.2, which is V in, and the voltage at the bottom is zero, then we can say the current down through there is going to be V in divided by R1. However, we also know that uh, the current going in and out of the op amp here is negligibly small, like it's very, very close to zero. That's just how the op amp is designed. So as a result, we can say that the same current basically flows all the way down through here and therefore V out divided by R1 plus R2 should give us the same, the same answer. So that'll be the current flowing down through these two resistors here. Um, so you can use this to calculate the two things that we've calculated above there. A is just equal to V out over V in, which is therefore one plus 12 over one, as we already saw. So you can calculate that from this. V out over V in is equal to R1 plus R2 over R1. Um, and then you can also uh, rearrange this to calculate V out. If you, if you already have V in, you can just rearrange it as follows. R1 plus R2 over R1 multiplied by V in. So this is just a kind of a different way of thinking about the same thing, but it doesn't change what the answer is, which is 2.6. Okay, that was question 10. So question 11. So this is another non-inverting op-amp circuit. Uh, what have we got this time? We've got an input voltage of minus 0 0.6 volts and uh, we're trying to calculate V out and we know that the two resistor values are 500 ohms and 2 kilo ohms that's 2000 ohms so what can we say here well the gain of the circuit is equal to R1 plus R2 over R1 so that's 500 plus 2000 divided by 500, which is just equal to five. So that's the gain of the circuit. The output voltage is gonna be five times bigger than the input voltage. Um, and therefore we can say V out is equal to A times V in. Now I should say this only applies um, as long as this point down here is pinned at zero volts. So we'll see in some of the later questions that you could have a different reference voltage down here, in which case that would need to be taken into account in this formula here. But if it's zero down here, at this point is grounded, then V out is just gonna be proportional to V in. And then the constant of proportionality is determined by just these two resistors. So R1 plus R2 over R1 times V in. So in this case, that's just equal to five times minus 0 0.6, which is equal to minus three volts. So that is our result there. That's gonna be the output voltage here. Now you do need to keep an eye on this to see that the answer that you get is within the voltage supply limits of the op amp, because if the if you ended up with an answer here which was bigger than plus five or lower than minus five, then the op amp wouldn't actually be able to produce the output. You'd get a, a saturated uh, output from the op amp instead. So we would either just level off at plus five or at minus five um, if, if the voltage here went outside that range. But in this case, we're well within it. So the op amp won't be saturated. Okay, so that one is minus three. Right, question 12.
So what have we got this time? VREF is two volts. So this is no longer pinned at zero, which it was in the previous questions. This point here is now um, rigidly set at two volts. Um, our input voltage is three volts. Uh, we're trying to find out what the output voltage is. Uh, we know that OR2 is equal to one kilo ohm, and OR1 is equal to two kilo ohms. So in this case, um, the output voltage is going to be, um, well, firstly, it's going to be referenced to V ref. So whatever we get out here, whatever fraction of the input that we get that gets amplified here and comes out as part of the output, it's going to be added onto the reference voltage. So it's going to be V ref plus, um, and then again, if the amplifier is or one plus or two, over or one multiplied by the input voltage. Now the difference here is that it's not just the number three here, which is the node voltage at the input here. Really what the amplifier is amplifying is the difference between three volts and the reference voltage. So we have to subtract the reference voltage from it. So it's Vn minus V ref. So in a circuit like this, where you've got a reference voltage, which is uh, non-zero, really what the amplifier is seeing is, it's the difference between the input voltage and whatever the reference voltage is. And then the output voltage that it gives is also referred to V ref. So it's like the op-amp kind of almost starts thinking of two volts as if that's zero, you know? Um, so in this case, um, we can see that the gain of the amplifier here is going to be 1.5 because this resistor is a third of the total resistance and this is two thirds. Um, so we're basically expecting to get, it looks like it should be 4.5, but let's work out the maths anyway and we'll see. So V ref is two or one plus or two is going to be two plus one divided by or one, which is two. multiplied by three minus two. So this is two plus three. Three minus two is just one. So this is three over two, which is plus three over two is 3.5. Sorry, I think I said 4.5 there a minute ago, but that's that of course is correct. It should be 3.5. So the reference voltage is two. So if the the difference between V in and V ref is one volt, it's that's the one volt that's gonna get amplified up by the amplifier. Now it's only in this case amplifying it by quite a modest gain of 1.5. So that one volt becomes 1.5 volts, but then it, it's also floating on top of a, a two volt reference. So you end up with 3.5 volts. So that's the output, 3.5. Okay, so question 13. So again, non-inverting op-amp. Um, what have we got this time? We've got minus one volt at our input. This point is grounded in this circuit. We're trying to calculate V out. And what else have we got? OR1 is one kilo. And OR2 is 20 kilo ohms. So we'll go about this naively first and then I think we're gonna run into a problem, but let's let's pretend like we don't think there's gonna be a problem first and we'll see what happens. So V out is gonna be, so because this point is grounded here, it's gonna be proportional to V in. It's just gonna be the input voltage multiplied by the gain of the amplifier. So V in multiplied by or one plus or two over or one. So that 
that is going to be equal to minus 1 times uh, 1,000 plus 20,000 over 1,000, which is equal to, what is that, minus 21. So you might be thinking, great, the output of this voltage or the output voltage of this amplifier is going to be minus 21 volts. Well, of course, that's rubbish, right? You can't get that because the op amp will saturate long before the output ever gets to minus 21 volts. You can see that the supply voltages here are plus or minus 12 volts. So rather than getting all the way down to minus 21, it's actually going to saturate at minus 12 volts, sorry minus 12 volts so it goes into negative saturation at minus 12 volts and that's that's as low as it's going to get so you can sort of go ahead and just calculate the output for a circuit like this assuming that it hasn't saturated and if you get an answer that's outside of the range that the op amp could have achieved then you just basically know that the op amp will have saturated before it got there so minus 12 anyway is our answer in this case and that is determined by the limits of the voltage supply um, provided to the op amp. So you do have to look carefully at these um, in the questions wherever there's supply voltages shown for the op amp you do need to look carefully to see that you haven't tried to put the output at a point that's outside of that voltage range otherwise you're kind of asking the impossible from the op amp. So minus 12 for this one.